and welcome to another episode of McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we're going to be talking about how to solve simultaneous equations using the elimination method. I'm sitting outside here on a beautiful Brisbane day and I'd like to thank Kwang and Arul for requesting this particular video. You can contact me on McClutchyMaths at yahoo.com if you have any questions or have a video you'd like to request yourself. So let's get started. I'm going to be using three different worked examples in this particular video to show you how to use the elimination method. I'm assuming before we start that you already know how to solve simultaneous equations using the substitution method and that you know how to solve linear equations as well. Now if you're not sure how to do that I've already created a video on how to solve simultaneous equations using the substitution method and I recommend you watch that one first. This particular subject area is usually for ad, um, advanced or prep math methods in year 10 and it's something that's used extensively throughout math methods in year 11 and 12 and also general maths in year 11. So this particular example, we're going to be solving two equations, y equals 2x plus 2 and negative y equals 4x minus 2. So our very first step is we're going to write the equations on top of one another and name them equation 1 and equation 2. So here we go. This gives us a better picture than when they're side by side of what we can actually do with these equations. Now the elimination method, the word elimination means to get rid of something. If you were to eliminate a person, you'd be basically knocking them off or killing them. Obviously we're not doing that in this in maths, but we are eliminating or removing something from the equation, getting rid of it. So when I have these two equations on top of one another, I can decide which variable I can eliminate because it's much easier to solve an equation when you only have one unknown. So first of all, looking at equation one and equation two, I'm going to think about what can I do with these equations using an operation to get rid of one. I could either add the equations together, subtract them, multiply them or divide. If we were to add equation one to equation two, I would end up with y disappearing because y plus minus y is the same as y take away y. So I'm going to end up with no y at all. And then I can solve for x and that's exactly what we want to do with this. So that's step two, is thinking about the problem. How could we go about solving it using the elimination method? Step three, I'm going to communicate the choice I've made to my teacher. So I'm going to write equation one plus equation two. That way when your teacher suddenly sees all this working that looks a little bit random, they're going to know that you've chosen to use the elimination method and which operation you're going to use. Step four, everything on the left hand side of equation one is added to everything on the left hand side of equation two. And we do the same on the right hand side. Everything on the right hand side of equation one is added to everything on the right hand side of equation two. Now I've got a little tip here for success. Be sure that you put the two equations in brackets because when we add negatives, it can become quite difficult for some people to do that properly. So it's important we use brackets to add that second equation in. So over here you can see on the left hand side, y is added to negative y and I've put that in brackets to show you that we're going to use one of those equations in brackets. And then I have 2x plus 2, that comes from equation 1, plus 4x minus 2. You can see why it's important that we put it in brackets, because when we expand the brackets, that plus minus becomes a minus. Step 5, we're going to expand those brackets and collect the like terms. So on the left hand side it becomes 0, on the right hand side I have 2x plus 4x gives 6x, and plus 2 minus 2 is 0. Therefore x is going to be equal to 0. Step six, I'm going to substitute what I know about x now, x is equal to zero, into either of the equations, one or two, to find what y's value is. And it's important that I communicate which one I'm choosing to my teacher. Well, I've decided that equation one has the easiest numbers in it, there's no negatives and the numbers are smaller. So I'm going to substitute x equals zero into equation one. I'm going to end up with y being equal to two. So now I've got the value for x and the value for y. Very last step is I'm going to check my work. So I'm going to substitute x equals 0 and y equals 2 into both equations. And if the answers are correct for both, then I'm, I know I've made the right choices. And I'm going to summarize my answer finally in a statement. And the reason why you bring it together at the end is that sometimes you may have found x and then a whole lot of working afterwards you find y and it's it's always nice to bring it together at the end for your teacher to read your final summary. So that's our first example we've just added equation 1 to equation 2. In this next example we're going to use a different operation. 
So in example two, we've got 3y equals 2x minus 6 and 2y equals 2x plus 8. So once again, I'm going to stack them on top of each other and name them equation 1 and equation 2. My next step is to consider what I can do to eliminate a variable by using one of these operators, plus, minus, times or divide. If I look at those right there, I can eliminate 2x if I subtract one equation from the other. Now it's important that you make a good choice here. Which equation should you subtract from the other? If you're good with your maths, it won't really matter which one you choose. But once again, important to use those brackets so that we don't end up with negative negative being a negative, for example. So I am going to choose to do equation one, take away equation two. And the reason I chose that is so that I wouldn't end up with a negative y. I wanted to just keep things a little bit more simple for myself down the track. So now I'm going to stack them on top of each other. Everything on the left is going to be subtracted from everything on the left and everything on the right. And I'm going to use brackets. So now I have 3y take away 2y on the left and that's equal to 2x minus 6 and notice I've put in brackets minus 2x plus 8. I'm going to expand those brackets and collect the like terms. Notice when I expand the brackets I end up with negative 2x and a negative 8. And I'm going to find that y is equal to minus 14. My final step is going to be to substitute y is negative 14 into either of those equations and communicate which one I've chosen. Now when I look at that I want to choose the one that's got the easiest number. So I'm going to substitute them into equation 2 because equation 2 has all positive numbers and smaller numbers as well. So if I substitute that in and expand that out and slowly solve the equation by doing the same thing to both sides of the equation one at a time, I find that x is equal to negative 18. And finally, I need to check my work just as I did for example one, and I'm going to write a statement to summarize that at the end. My last example today is going to use a different operator, multiply. So in this case, we're going to follow the exact same process. We write those equations one on top of the other, and we name them equation one and equation two. Now, straight away when I look at this, I know that if I add them together, I'm not going to eliminate anything. Same as if I subtract, nothing's going to be eliminated. So if I'm told to use the elimination method, I need to consider what else I could do. I could times or I could divide. Well, dividing them is not going to help me, but I could multiply one of the equations by a factor on both sides of the equation, and that will help me to eliminate one of the equations. So if I multiply equation one by two, I'm going to be able to subtract one of those equations from the other, and the y is going to disappear. So let's do that. Let's communicate the equation. And I've made a little error here that should be equation 2 multiplied by 2. So everything on both sides of equation 2 is going to be multiplied by 2. So now I've got 2 times 2y on the left and on the right hand side 2 times and in brackets 3x minus 6 and I put it in brackets just to make sure I don't make any mistakes. Now let's expand that out. I've got 4y equals 6x take away 12. I'm going to call that now equation 3 because I'm going to use equation 3 and equation 1 together to eliminate one of the variables. So if I subtract equation 1 from equation 3, I'm going to be able to eliminate one of those variables. So I need to communicate that decision. Equation 3 take away equation 1. And now let's do it. 4y take away 4y on the left hand side equals 6x minus 12 minus, and I notice in brackets I've got x plus 2. So let's expand that out. And I'm going to find that x is equal to 14 divided by 5. Now, a lot of people are tempted to put that straight into the calculator and turn it into a decimal number. Don't do that. Leave it as a fraction. We're now going to substitute x equals 14 over 5 into either of those equations. They both have fairly complicated things going on, so it really doesn't matter which one you choose. But you need to communicate your decision to the teacher. And I've decided to use equation 1. So now if I expand that out, I've got 4y equals 14 fifths plus 2. And the reason I chose equation 1 is because I wouldn't have to multiply x by anything. Now I'm going to have y equals 14 fifths plus 2 divided by 4. Now this is where it gets a little bit complicated. You need to be good with fractions. What I'm going to do first is change the number 2 in the brackets to an improper fraction as well, 10 over 5. It's an equivalent fraction. That makes it easy for me to add the two fractions together because to add two fractions together you need to have the same denominator. So now I've got 24 fifths divided by 4 over 1. Now 
a lot of people get confused with fractions. We've got a very simple rule. When you've got two fractions and one's divided by the other, we change the divider by sign to a times and we flip the fraction on the right hand side. And now I'm going to expand that out. 24 is made up of 6 times 4 and I'm going to leave the denominator as 5 times 4. Now I can actually cancel some of those common factors. 4 divided by 4 gives me 1 which simplifies and gives me y equals 6 fifths. Final step, check your work as always and write a statement summarising both of those values. Now I'm not going to take you through today how to do elimination of um, simultaneous equations using the division. However, I do have that on another video. It's the video I've created on geometric sequences and that shows you how to solve geometric sequences using the elimination method. Now if you're in grade 10 it'll be a little bit over your head at the moment but you can skip forward to the relevant um, parts. So my name is Natalie McClutchy. Thank you so much for listening today. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.